Hello and welcome back to Express North. I am here with a friend of mine, Jennifer Vaughan, and we know each other because we both have a stammer and we've both been through the same intensive speech therapy course, the M M Maguire, Maguire program. So Jennifer, can I ask you about what it was like when you were younger? And did your stammer ever hold you back? Yeah, so as a young, young child, I don't think I really noticed I was different. I think that was just how I spoke and that was it. You know, it didn't really bother me back then. It was when I started going to school and especially secondary school where I was asked to speak out in an English class one time and that memory stays with me. I got up read out, kind of blurred it out a bit, but yeah, it got stuck on a lot of words and I didn't think much of it, but then afterwards there was the sniggers and then the comments and the mickey taking and I think that's when I realised that it was something different and then it was something that I wanted to hide and then I think in secondary school, you know, I had this outgoing personality as a child I guess and then when I got to secondary school I went very much introvert, didn't want to speak, very quiet. I think people just thought I was shy and quiet or maybe even rude at times because I just would prefer to not speak rather than speak and stammer. Yeah. Before I went on the course I felt very lonely as though there was no one else who was feeling like I did. Whenever I was asked to speak out, I felt shameful, as though I was a bad person because I couldn't do those simple things that other normal people could do. Is mm. that what you f felt as well? Yeah, I mean, I have a lovely family who are very supportive, but people, you know, it's difficult to understand what it's like to have a stammer and... Yeah, I did feel lonely because sometimes it was easier just to spend time on my own rather than go out with friends, especially as you get older, it becomes more challenging. But yeah, being with friends, but being known as the quiet one, or just not being able to be myself when I was at home, I could. And yeah, it is a lonely place to be because I didn't think there was anyone else mm. out. I'd never met anyone with a stutter. I didn't know there was anyone who could understand what I was going through. What are the things that you couldn't do that you really wanted to when you were younger? Just the simple things. Oh yeah, so answering a phone. You know, I would only text at the sound of a telephone made my stomach turn. But as I got older, so ordering a drink at a bar, mortifying, ringing for a taxi, ordering, when I went out for a meal, I would order what I could say rather than what I wanted to have and even just introducing myself I used to get very anxious about I don't know going to a party or going somewhere where there was new people because they're gonna ask me my name and I couldn't say it and I would get stuck and I would dread things for days like that like oh my gosh someone might ask me mm. my name something so simple but when you can't say it you feel so mm. stupid so you went on the course mm -hmm. which is very very hard it's not an easy option and you left there and how has it changed your life? Well yeah the course is very intensive and difficult but definitely life changing and you know nothing worth having comes easy does yeah. it so it was changing from the moment on the Thursday when I was on the course I got up in front of a room of over 100 people and I said my name for the first time and for me that was just so emotional and so life-changing that even to this day I don't know if I'm sat in a meeting at work or I get introduced to a new person and I can say my name I do a little mm. yes I can still say it and that's a huge achievement for me but yeah, in terms of how it changed my life, you know, I didn't think I could have the career that I wanted to have because I work in healthcare, it's a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could do that. I didn't think anyone would hire someone who has a stammer. 
Um, I didn't think I would get married because I couldn't say my name yeah. and my vows and things. I d didn't think I would have children because I didn't want to pass my stammer down mm -hmm. to them or I didn't think I could look after them properly because of my stammer. You know, there was loads of things that I just, my future looked pretty bleak at one point because yeah. I didn't think I could do any of that. I couldn't even call up and make an appointment at the doctor's surgery, yeah. you know. But since the course, it's just given me this massive freedom and confidence and, yeah, I've got a stammer, but so what, you know? It's not the end of the world no. and I've been given the tools that, yeah, if I get stuck, I stop, I breathe. I try again and I actually for the first time could enjoy having a conversation with mm -hmm. someone rather than just get it over and done with as quickly as possible and have that constant stress in your stomach every day. Now I can just, someone engages me in a conversation I think yeah I can enjoy that Yeah, and that's huge for me. It might seem strange to other people but yeah. I always was thinking that I was wanting to live life rather than just watching from the sidelines and that's mm. now what I feel as though I'm in there mm -hmm. doing it rather than just watching. Yeah, I think I had this person inside me but I couldn't be that person and now when I see myself and I'm in the job I want to do and I'm married and have a house and things and I think, oh, I am that person that was trapped mm. inside and it just makes me feel so happy that I managed to get there and that's all thanks to the Maguire programme and still is. Mm. It's something I work on daily and have the support of other people like yourselves who understand and support each other. And that's there for life, isn't it? It's yeah. not as though you, you just go on it once and that's it. There is lots and lots of aftercare. Yeah, and I think that's essential because you never know what's going to happen and it's an up and down journey. Mm -hmm. Something might challenge you with your speech and you've got those people there to talk to yeah. and to help you through that. Mm -hmm. So you've been now on the programme for about five years. Yes. And next month you are going to help teach that course in Manchester. Yes. How does it feel to have gone from the student to the instructor? It feels so bizarre. <laughs> Just, I remember being on my first course and Dave Ayres was my instructor and he was up there and the things he said just totally inspired me and I still hear his voice in my head at times and think, oh yep, yeah, that's what I need to do. And throughout all the times I've been on courses, you see some really inspirational people and you think, that's what I want to be like. And I always wanted to instruct because I wanted to inspire other mm. people and I wanted to see them come out of that place that is so low and so yeah. bleak and I wanted to help someone else get out of that place where I was when I come on the programme. Mm. But to think I'm doing it so soon, I pictured myself as this old person, wise, know everything, but yeah, to be doing it so soon is, I mean, it's exciting so exciting and you know I don't feel like I'm doing it on my own because the support I've got from my friends on the programme who are all going to be there helping me mm. to coach these new students. I don't feel scared, I feel excited. Mm. Thank you ever so much. Thank Thanks you. Lucy. So if you have a stammer or if you know of anyone else who does, I'll leave all of the details for the Manchester course underneath this video and please feel free to ask me if you're wanting to know any of thing, wanting to know anything else. Thank you for watching and goodbye.